happy Saturday, Saturday, May 14th, 2022. Of course, yesterday was Friday the 13th. However, we know our dates have been, the actual number of the date has been jumbled up. And I think the three of us as, uh, and our audience watching really only take the astrology to be kind of the serious calendar for us and for our galactic brethren. But before we get started, I am going to go ahead and light my sage before I even introduce um, our beautiful guest here, which you all know. We were just laughing before uh, we started recording how messy sage is. All right. And so I'm going to ask that Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel come into the space, my space, Stephanie's space and Emmy's space, and also protect our viewers who are watching right now if they accept the protection if they consent to it um to keep our recording devices clean and smooth because we know we are right literally smack dab in this final battle one of the biggest battles we've ever been through and we're going to be talking about what's going on and we're going to start off with a pretty serious topic that happened yesterday but before we start off with that topic i want to also introduce again my lovely friends here of course we have stephanie from spiritual perspectives of our great awakening she hasn't been on the channel in a while because she She's been sick. <laughs> so um, I'm so glad she's feeling better now. And also we have uh, my beautiful friend, Emmy here, <laughs> Holistic Genie. Oh. So I'm going to be posting their links as always, guys, down in the description box below. Um, so you guys can go ahead. If you aren't already following them, go ahead and follow them. Both Stephanie and Emmy are what I would call channelers through different means. Emmy does the astrology. Uh, and Reiki and Stephanie is uh, obviously an incredible tarot card reader. And so we're going to come together the meeting of the minds. I've got my cards here too, just in case I need to pull. And we are going to start with a topic that we weren't planning on starting with until something happened yesterday. We were just going to do just a brief check-in with the energies of this crazy month we're in, but something being the crazy month of May that we're in, um, something happened yesterday with our financial system. And it's really, um, I was saying before we started filming, it's, it's given me a very heavy heart this morning and last night. Um, I know Stephanie, we briefly spoke about it, um, but I'm sorry, I'm being rude. How are you ladies doing before we even get started? I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, a little, that. I'm a little congested, but I'm, I'm getting there, getting better. And Emmy I mean, actually did Reiki on me when I was sick and it, it really helped. That's amazing. That. I had a really bad, bad headache and, and uh, bad body ache. So it was, it was some temporary, temporary relief. I can't even talk right. Mm. So thank you, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, I'm doing, I'm doing well. Um, riding the waves of these crazy energy times here. Um, but in a way it, it makes it easier being aware of what's going on and, and being able to observe things without attachment or without judgment, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier. It really does. And it, and it helps me to, to, to be able to be able to support and encourage my family and friends be like, Hey, <laughs> I know everybody's freaking out, but you know, this is what it's not final. It's not, it's not, um, I heard something this morning that is kind of cheesy, but I really liked it. We can't control the waves, but we can learn how to surf, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, another quote, fun. if you've ever been surfing, it's fun. we can't control the waves, so we can learn how to surf. And, um, another quote I love is in the end, everything is okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And mm -hmm. so with what happened okay, yesterday, fine. the reason why it affected me now, I, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I, and I, and I know Stephanie and Emmy, Emmy know this. I'm not a money person. Like that's not my wheelhouse. I'm not <laughs> the one that under it really understands finances. I'm like, keep it simple, stupid, just simple subtraction and addition is enough for me. That was not, uh, as you guys know, I'm a history lover, philosophy lover, English lover. But when it comes to numbers, that's not my thing. It's not my strong suit. And I have very much steered. I don't like talking about in my own personal life, I don't like talking about money. Money makes me very uncomfortable to talk about. Even um, when I, in the past, have started new relationships with people and you ha eventually have to have that conversation about how much you make when you get serious with that person or, you know, if you're moving in with that person or, or what your, your assets are, that always made me super uncomfortable. I just don't. 
And I've joked before that it's not something that's important to me, money. It's, it's, that's why I've always dated poor men. Like, it's not something I ever like look for in somebody. Um, that's honestly just, I, I think I have a lot of PTSD around it because of how I grew up. I grew up in a very, um, aristocratic, we'll say society. And there was a lot of pressure there. And so that's why I, I try to stay away from this conversation. But with that being said, um, I've never personally felt comfortable with crypto. I've never felt comfortable with it. Even though I don't understand finances, like some people do, my gut always told me that this was not something that was good crypto. And the reason why I think I felt that way is, is it because it, it seemed too computer generated where someone could just press a button and then it's done. And, but with that being said, I, I'm not a specialist. I have friends that are heavily involved in crypto or have been heavily involved in crypto. I don't like pushing fear-based propaganda when it comes to, you have to buy this now, you have to buy this gold or silver now, because I don't want people to be afraid. That's a low vibration. That's survival vibration. We know that there's more than enough abundance to go around for everyone. And I know that people in my life, if they saw someone starving, they would bring them home and give them food. Like we are, we are humans. We are not dog eat dog. We have compassion and empathy. And so I've always steered away from that on my channel. But last night, yesterday, I was notified that the one of the cryptos or some of the cryptos crashed. Didn't dip. It completely crashed. And what I was told is that this had to happen. It had to crash because it is part of the system, which was what my gut was telling me anyway, in order for us to build up to a complete financial crash that we know has to happen. Now, with that being said, even though, yes, that could be good news for us because we're heading in the right direction, I also was notified and saw a bunch of postings, and I have to be careful about how we say this because of YouTube, of people who had put all of their money, all of their trust, and all of their faith into crypto. And as of last night, they had lost everything. And in that desperation, we're starting to see people remove themselves from life. We know that the military back channel did speak about a particular weekend where this would happen. I'm not saying for sure that this is the weekend. My whole point in addressing this with everybody watching right now as as one human being to another human being, as a human being that doesn't give a shit how much money you have in your, in your bank account, I love you. And you are supposed to be on this earth. Please don't, if you've lost everything, guess what? We're all about to lose everything because the whole system is about to crash. So please, please don't do anything stupid. DM me if you need to on Twitter. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Um, please don't do anything stupid. I, that, it just makes me want to cry because you are priceless. You as a human being are priceless. And we all make mistakes. We've all been hoodwinked in the past by these nefarious players, these controllers. And so I'm not blaming any truthers who are promoting crypto. None of us truly know what's going on. In a lot of ways, we're just going off of our research and our gut instinct. So we all make mistakes. Forgive yourself and please don't do anything stupid. But with that being said, um, can I ask you, and then we can get to the, the weekend because I think that this is happening well, we know nothing is coincidence, right? We know everything happens in divine time. And so just to give people any type of clarification, and again, guys, as Stephanie says a lot, as I say a lot, this is just tarot cards. So take it all with a grain of salt. We're generalizing. I know there's all, all these different categories of crypto. So we're just generalizing. Please do your own research. Don't, don't do things because we tell you to do what you feel like is best for you and your family. Stephanie, can, I, can we ask the cards... Who is behind the crypto phenomenon? All right. Because again, as I've said, my gut never felt comfortable with this. And it might have just been because I don't understand it. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, I was optimistically cautious and I just chose to wait. I did invest in silver 
Mm-hmm. Um, I took my retirement money out of the regular stock system and invested it in um, precious metals. Um, but the crypto, I was kind of like you, Bryce. I just was like, mm, I think I might wait and see. Um, well, precious metals, you can, that's like money. You can hold it in your hand. It's yours. You know, right. you can't just disappear. Right. Right. Um, and, and how inexpensive it was to buy. Um, if I needed, you know, those few thousand dollars, um, I could just sell it and it's, you yeah. know, about the same price that I bought it for. So I figured that was a, a safe option to invest in. Yeah. Well, it's definitely not nefarious players that crashed it. Um, the Ten of Cups, I mean, that's a happiness, a family card. I'm getting it's um, probably the White Hats or associated people associated with the White Hats. Um, deals were made. Some sort of deal was made. Um, but it, we're not going to... Something's being blocked. With crypto right now so we might not be seeing the full picture right now um because it looks like now granted this this is just the cards so those who feel like they might have lost money may have not because this is distribution of money this particular card but it is someone high in power that's the king and it was crashed but it has to crash because it's going to be going on a new, there's a new beginning with it. There's some new beginning that is coming up. So from what I take it is that if the white hats, the good guys were responsible for crashing it yesterday, then it obviously that would tell me that it was, it's, it's inception. Whoever created crypto was working for the bad guys. What I'm getting is they are crashing it on the nefarious end to maybe restart it on the benevolent end. Does that make sense? That's yeah, kind of what I'm gathering probably, the cards. Yeah, so it's probably going to... So don't, again, don't take yourself out, guys. Like everything that we... Money we is have, replaceable. Yeah, M- money is Your replaceable. life is not. No, money comes and goes. Like money is just glorified paper. We know it's energy, but there... We all know at this point that we are slaves to a system regardless of whether it's crypto or regular money, we're slaves to a system until that system is completely demolished. And we just have to wait until that happens because there is no other reality we can walk into right now in order to survive. And so everybody who lost money, it, it's kind of like all of us, all of us have lost money to an extent through taxing, through all sorts of stuff. They're going to get it back. It's going to come back with the new financial system coming in. <sighs> All right. So should we ask then what the, what is the, um, what does God source God want people to know right now who are feeling hopeless because of what happened yesterday and are feeling, you know, I I know a lot of people are probably feeling very betrayed because I think a lot of truthers were promoting this and they probably feel like they were duped. But I want to tell you guys, like I said, we've all been duped. It doesn't mean whoever advised you was necessarily bad. It just, we're all in a state of confusion right now as to what's, what's going on, what's good, what's bad. So, and I understand that I've myself have struggled with anxiety and depression and we're in a crazy time right now, astrologically anyway. And so these energies are making people feel things that are not permanent. You know, this too shall pass. Don't do anything that's going to stop you from being here with us. We want you here with us. a second to process this. Well, I think creator is reaffirming that they are loved. I'm getting the empress and the emperor, emperor card. And when I'm looking at it as um, the mother, father, God, it's the feminine, the masculine aspect of creator, right? Um, 
but this could be a mom and a dad's love right here. These two cards put together. And so, um, and, and also God is affirming that you still have power regardless of what you lost. You still have power with that particular card. Um, this is a chance to really take a step back. Go outside. Yeah. Yep. Go within with the hermit card, you know, um, regardless of, of Jesus's story, we know that Jesus did go up on the mountain oftentimes to regroup and, and, and meditate and pray. So this is a good chance to take a step back. Don't do anything hasty. Don't do anything like block yourself from hurting yourself. Um, this is a, this is a time to really just rest, wait it out, ride the waves. Um, and I'm also getting, I have the higher front right here. And I'm wondering if crypto has something to do with taking out the rest of uh, the puppets. Yeah. Like putting to rest these players. Now, the higher font, it could be a good card. It could be a bad card. It, it, what it is, is a spiritual leader. And we know that a lot of the dark players were spiritual leaders on the dark end, right? So I just want to get a, one or two more cards here. So if you're struggling right now emotionally because you lost everything, it's basically a good time for you to take this opportunity to do some self-healing and some self-exploration that might not have presented its, itself if this hadn't happened. And I will say, guys, there isn't a, a financial advisor that I do listen to, even though my understanding of finances is very minimal. Um, and he had been saying he's a financial advisor that understands that's awake, basically. And he kept saying for months that crypto has to crash. That once you see crypto crash, it's, it's go time. It means that it's about to flip itself. Everything's about to flip itself for the good. Yeah. I'm getting the queen of pentacles. So it's like queen of pentacles is a very, it is very wealthy. That could be with money. That could be with abundance of anything really. Um, but she's very confident. And so it's saying, a source is saying, have confidence. We're going on a brand new beginning journey. Okay. So I'm not thinking that there's anything to be really worried about anyways. If you're stuck in 3D land where you're still in that state of fear, obviously look within, try to get yourself out of 3D thinking because um, money is 3D thinking. I mean, obviously we need money to survive and everything, but um, universe is always going to take care of you. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, you know, going into not to go into money, much details or anything, I know firsthand what it's like to have absolutely no money, be a mom, um, barely have a place to, to stay, a place to live. And I've seen miracles happen in my own life because I had faith and I looked within and I tried to do a lot of work on myself. And um, I got myself out of that situation. God will always get you out of that situation. God knows what you need. Yeah. And I've been very honest um, with you guys that every time I post a video on YouTube now, $200 gets taken out of my AdSense account. My money's being stipend into another account. Um, we know it's part of the spell casting and as stressful as that, as that, as that have been, has been for me, I've allowed it to continue to happen because it needs to happen because there needs to be, there's a bigger picture here and I've been fine. You know, I've, I've, the universe is God is providing and so just allow to understand this is just one chapter in the story, <laughs> you know, and, and um, ask for help. I mean, there's a lot of people in your life. I can guarantee it for most people that can help you if you need a little bit of help right now, you know, and people, a lot of people are willing to help you because believe it or not, most people, I think most people, human beings are not super worried about how much money someone has, you know, that's a very shallow person. A very vapid person who cares about that it's always good to prepare anyways for whatever is to happen like for instance i i was told you know a couple of years ago just to be prepared and um with with money crashes and stuff like that and um what i did is i, I went onto the facebook marketplace and i bought for really really dirt cheap a few tents even just 
you know, if it was cold outside, if it was winter and the lights went out, you, you put the tent in your living room and it, and it keeps the warmth in. Or if it's really, really hot outside and the blackout happens, you put the tent out in your yard, you know, stuff like that. So just having that sort of stuff because it's still a roof over your head. And you know what? Who cares what it is? Who, who cares that it's not a big fancy house? Yeah. It, it's still a place to stay. So that's the important thing. And honestly, if you put a tent out on a, a tropical beach, as long as I had a bathroom and a shower, I'm, I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> I don't need that big house. We need to start letting go to of what we would deem as important necessities that are material things. Yeah. Let it go. Just let it go. Our world's about to change anyway. So it's time to let go of the old things, the old ways, the old ways of thinking. Can I ask one more question? I think we yeah. talked about this last night, and I'm not saying this is true or not, but just to kind of get people to ground themselves into what's happening. Years ago, the military back channel mentioned something about a particular weekend that starts with an S. Of people removing themselves from <gasps> this plane of existence. You guys know what I'm talking about. And we've been trying to figure out what that weekend was going to be. Is this perhaps this weekend? I mean, it could be multiple weekends that this happens. That's kind of what I was intuitively thinking. It's not just one particular, because I think there's going to be some dark players who do it one weekend. I think there's going to be, sadly, I think fundamentalists are going to end up removing themselves and they realize that they're in a satanic cult themselves, even though we tried telling them. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we're looking more toward the future for, for that particular weekend with the two of wands. Um, <clears throat> this situation is going to balance itself out. So, I mean, there might be a few people that do, but it's not big. Yeah. It's, it's, um, this is like, no, this is saying no, but I, I get that some people will with that nine of swords card. So it's not like the big off, offing yourself weekend mm -hmm. kind of a thing. I think that's more or less going to be with, that could be the, the stock market crash. That could be with the whole fiat money crash. That could be with disclosure. Like you said, disclosure of the satanic church, disclosure of the Hollywood people. Um, I think has multiple meanings. I think those military back channel drops have a lot of meanings to it. Yeah, they're complex. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and shift focus. Um, just moral of the story, guys. Like, please just listen to your gut with things. If there is a truth or that you're following and you really like, and they're telling you to do something, but your gut is telling you not to, don't override your gut feeling. Don't do it. Your guts, just please just listen to your gut. Okay. Don't fall for scare tactics. That's the old system. Your, your abundant love. All right. All right. So let's move into this weekend. So Emmy, I'm going to let you take it away. Sure. Okay. So I started looking into more um, of the astrology around this um, lunar eclipse and it's, it's really quite interesting. And it's not as scary or, I mean, it's, it's intense and, and, and overwhelming, but it's not as scary as I think um, we, we can make it out to be, you know, we, we tend to make mountains out of molehills. So I want to offer just some information to show you how um, we have particular alignments that are supporting us and helping us right now. So we've got the moon in Scorpio and the moon is conjunct the south node and a conjunction is when two planets or points are close to each other at a, at a degree point, like 
If you think of the astrological wheel, it has 360 degrees. Well, when you have a planet or point within a few degrees of another planet or point, it's called a conjunct. So the moon in Scorpio is basically next to the south node. And, and the south node is representative of where we've been, what we've done, where we're coming from, where we're coming out of. And then you've got the sun opposite the moon and in opposition in Taurus. And the sun is conjunct the north node. And the north node is where we're going to, where we're headed, where we're growing, where we're changing, uh, where we're evolving. So <clears throat> this eclipse is a lot about separating the junk from the good stuff, what we want to let go of, what we want to keep. Um, the moon and the south node together is like very cleansing. It's like a clearing out, a letting go of what is no longer needed. And the sun and the north node is like a simplifying, like a getting a handle on what it is that you want. Um, coming more into your authenticity, who you really are, your true self, um, and what where you're going and what you need to get there. So now Taurus is our first earth sign. So it's about what's on the surface, what you can see. And Scorpio is all about what's underneath, what you can't see, the deep-rooted stuff. So if you look at all of the major areas in your life, like plants, like, like you're looking out in your yard and there's all these plants, the part of the plant that you can see would be sun and Taurus and the root system would be moon and Scorpio. And so you want to look at your plants, which you've got going on and figure out which ones need to go and then just go dig it up, uproot it. And perhaps what's going on with the crypto is this removal of this particular plant that is not needed. It's like an insidious weed that is masking itself as a pretty flower currently, you know, so maybe that's, that's what's what going on. I exactly yeah. love that analogy, by the way. Yeah. Thank that you. That was really awesome. <laughs> Thanks. I, 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 Bryce said, let's make it simple so that a five-year-old yeah. could understand so I'm just trying to do that here when okay. it comes to finances you have to talk to me like i'm five so <laughs> <laughs> me too. that's so. why i like the analogy because i love plants i'm a gardener so mm -hmm. that works for me yes yes um okay so um and also like okay so with the, with the moon's nodes, the north node is where we're going. The south node is where we're coming from. The south node is what's familiar. Okay? <laughs> like it, it is our old, comfortable, ratty, ratted, tatted pair of slippers, you know, and they may be comfortable and they may be familiar, but we have these new slippers that have like, you know, memory foam in them and they're totally plush and lush and way better than our old pair of slippers. But our old pair of slippers calls us back to it because that's what's familiar to us. That's what's comfortable, even though it's not as good as what the North Node has, what these new slippers have to offer us. So you're, you might find yourself in a bit of a tug of war right now with, oh, I should let this go, but oh, I don't want to. And, you know, so just be, be gentle with yourself. Be, be very gentle. Try not to attach to anything that's coming up. Just observe it. Just observe it, make mental note, don't attach to it, try not to judge yourself. You're uh, so I lost you there. Did you hear that, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat yeah. that? My my uh Michael, I'm gonna ask you to come in again and make sure everything is um stable with the recording devices so that we can get this information out for the betterment of humanity. So we Zoom has been very wonky for the twenty last twenty four hours, by the way. Well, we know that that might be coming soon too, right? So Oh yeah. Yeah. So um will you repeat what you just said there, Emmy? Because my system cut out. So um for my audience. Sure. How far back do you want me to go? Like just, it was just the last sentence I think you said that cut out. 
Okay. So there might be a bit of a tug of war you feel going on in, internally where you, you know, you want to wear your old pair of slippers, but this new pair of slippers is just so much better. And you just kind of a, a, a tug of war there going on. And also with the moon and Scorpio conjunct the South node and the sun and Taurus conjunct the North node, we have a square with Saturn. And normally in the astrological realm, squares, uh, which is a 90 degree angle to a certain point or planet, and opposition, which is a 180 degree um, aspect to between two planets or points, typically those are looked at as hard aspects or challenging aspects. But in the, in the astrology that I'm studying, they like to get away from the positive and negative verbiage. So they identify oppositions and squares as achievement, achievement um, aspects. So we have Saturn in Aquarius and Saturn is squaring the moon and the sun. And when you have a square with Saturn, you have this um, mentorship kind of energy or a parental or like a teacher, kind of someone in authority, but it's not an oppressive authority. It's like someone saying, Hey, did you get this done? You know, did you do your homework? Uh, did you get the yard work done? Did you get, you know, are you doing what you need to be doing? Accountability, to right? Like someone holding yes. you accountable. Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Which is Saturn's, that's Saturn's original template. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the, the dark players have inverted Saturn, but Saturn literally is like father time in the matrix. As far as Saturn's literally just paying your bills. Yeah. Put gas in your car. Like that's it's, Saturn's mm -hmm. original role. Right. It, it, it's the necessary um, structure and authority that we need in our life to keep us moving in a forward direction. You know, it, it's not a bad thing, even though, like you said, it's been inverted. Saturn is not a bad planet. Every planet and point has um, a spectrum of qualities. You know, you have the lower vibrational qualities and you have the higher vibrational qualities. And this is a higher vibrational quality of Saturn. It's, it's supporting what's going on with this eclipse. It's supporting the forward growth. Um, and then we also have Pluto, which is retrograde in Capricorn right now. And it's making an aspect to the moon called a sextile which is a more harmonious, easygoing, nice flow state of, a, of an aspect. So you've got Pluto, which is a uh, ruler of Scorpio, and you also have Neptune, the other ruler of Scorpio, making a um, trine to the moon. So you have these very helpful, encouraging, harmonious aspects to what is going on. So we really don't need to be so afraid. You know, we're all afraid of our fears, but these things are coming up to be looked at lovingly and with grace and with ease. Like just, just look at it, you know, don't run away. Don't be afraid. Don't get your panties in a bunch. Look at your plants. Okay. This one's not doing so well. Let's, let's just get that one out of there or, you know, let, whatever. <clears throat> so no fear. And like what you guys were saying earlier with the crypto and the fear, you know, it may look like you've lost everything, but you haven't really, you know, we live in a world of illusions mm -hmm. and astrologically, what I see is some, yes, some potentially scary stuff coming up to be looked at, but you don't need to be afraid of it. Like we have so much support going on right now with these energies, even though they're incredibly intense, we are very much loved and supported going through this right now. <clears throat> if you're so. still breathing, you haven't lost really anything. Yeah. You your lungs Amen. still here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I, all I got. And I, I just really wanted to um, just emphasize how important it is to be gentle 
on yourself and give yourself grace. And if there's stuff coming up, that's a, that's scary, just look at it, acknowledge it, you know, name it, claim it and tame it, I love name that. it, claim it and tame it. And you can do that. You know, we all have, uh, we're all very powerful. We all can get through this in a healthy way. And like Stephanie was saying, ask for help. Like we're so, we, so we want to do everything by ourselves, you know, and, and it's, we're not made that way. We're social beings. We need each other. Not, none of us is an Island. Like none of us, none of us can get through this life alone. Like it just is not possible, but yet we think that we have to, or that we should, or we're not strong if we have to ask for help. And that's an old programming that just needs to be plucked. Yeah. Yes. And this comes back to something I harp on my channel all the time because it actually is like, because my whole professional life and personal life before YouTube was teaching authentic yoga and go back and forth to India. This is spirituality guys. Spirituality isn't rainbows and butterflies and running away. That's escapism. Spirituality is actually sitting in your shit. Spirituality is like actually allowing um, those uncomfortable emotions to actually be, be triggered, allow them to be triggered so that they can come up and so that you can work through them and remove them. Because if you don't work through them, if you push them away and you go back to escapism, then they're not going to go anywhere. And you're just going to be stuck in a rut, stuck in a rut, doing the same thing over and over and over again, getting no different results. And um, I know we talked about this, Stephanie, because I think people are often confused about meditation where they use meditation to try to manifest things. And that's not what meditation is at all. It's having a one pointed focus in order to allow things to come up in order to allow what you, with whatever you need to work on. We all came, we all decided to come to, as spiritual beings to come into a very dense human existence. And we did that. So not only could we help push the earth forward, but also in the micro to learn more things as well. And when these, and that's why I love you were saying about achievements, why I've, I've talked about this ad nauseum, but I know that rep repetition is how we learn. David Grieg, my first big teacher in Philadelphia, you know, the, the traditional yoga we practice is extremely difficult. It's, it's extremely, people, we, we have a joke, we call it ashtangorexic because people start it and they can't, they lose so much weight because you're just burning so, I mean, you're just, you're, you, you're, it's challenging. Um, it's not fun. It's not like a relaxful thing. And when David would have a student come in, that was like a 22 year old gymnast, whatever, next posture, whatever. When an older man would come in who was overweight, couldn't touch his toes, David would get so excited because now we have something to work with, right? Where there is no resistance, where there is no friction, there's no spark. Where there is no spark, there's no light. And so that friction that comes up, that uncomfortableness that causes that tug of war, as you said, is like that match that you're lighting. And eventually you strike hard enough and there's a light. And that light would not have happened without that striking, without that tug of war, without that resistance. And it's not fun. And sometimes it takes a while. And sometimes you think you've worked through something. And then a year later, it comes up again because we're fickle human beings. And that also gives us this amazing opportunity to look at, because I think that pride we have, or we don't want to ask for help, or we want to look like we've got to, that's coming from the ego. And the ego is the false sense of self. It's not real. Your soul doesn't fear anything. Your soul is vulnerable. Your soul knows humility. Your soul knows unconditional love. It's the ego that fears challenge. And the reason why the ego fe fe fears challenge is because we are mortal beings. And when that mortality happens for us, the spirit doesn't go anywhere, but the ego does. It goes back down with the body, back in ashes to ashes. And that in itself, as I tell my students a lot with the whole friction and resistance, that's the idea of opposing forces, which is what we're working with in the yoga practice a lot within the physical practice. But that's also the whole manifestation of your existence as a human, these opposing forces where you are an eternal being living in a mortal body. 
And so those are already opposing realities that cause that spark of life. And so I love that embrace, embrace like Marnie Alton, the bar teacher that we work with sometimes, she always says like, there's no such thing as, as like obstacles. It's just a puzzle. It's just a puzzle. How am I going to work this puzzle out? How am I going to work through this so that I'm not just holding these broken pieces of the picture? I can actually put the picture together, seal it, frame it, put it on the wall and walk away and be done with it. You know, so um, so I love that that you're talking this about being an achievement versus like something that's scary. And what is the acronym for fear? It's false evidence appearing real. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. You're still muted. Sorry, I had to blow my nose. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh my God, they both muted. It's just the bright show now. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm, I'm still very, <clears throat> you know. Okay. Flemmy. Um, I want to make a, a, a recommendation to the viewers too. And this is something I've been doing. I told you, Bryce, I've been doing this. Um, it's very, very helpful is um, journaling. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, these emotions come up um you know and emmy you said to observe them and yes it that's 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 amazing to say it, putting them to paper putting the emotions to paper helps you to acknowledge it and release it yeah. so it's something that i've been doing um and i've actually been doing a lot of shadow work anyways and um i told you this price yesterday on the phone but um, something that I started to recognize about myself is uh, actually going to be doing self-triggering um, where I, I'm a musician and a singer. So where I used to be, well, no, I'm still, I guess Go, going forward, I'm going to make it a goal that I'm going to continue that. But um, music uh, is what speaks to my heart and music can either bring up some sort of happiness and joy or it can also bring up old emotions I haven't acknowledged in years, whether it be good or bad. And so I was listening to a song the other day that just happened to pop in my head. I put it on and it was amazing how much, how many memories came up with that particular song. Um, and they were very happy memories. However, because I had this feeling of nostalgia, I actually started to cry a little bit. Um, and so I had this idea, and I'm going to be starting to do this. I'm going to be um, self-triggering by going back through certain songs I know specifically that are going to bring up old standard emotions from my past. And I'm going to journal as I listen to it. And so this is um, a part of shadow work that I'm going to be doing. But, um, and people don't have to do that, but just journaling what your emotions are is a good way to, to really get things up and released. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the same concept. I'm a big proponent for talk therapy. I know people are gonna be like, Oh, but all the therapists are bad. The part of the system, not every therapist is bad guys. My trauma therapist was absolutely amazing. And she literally saved me. Um, and that's kind of what they do in talk therapy though. You start talking about something and they just keep digging and getting you to go deeper to pull up the root, right? The, the root of the issue, what is really going on. And somebody, we were talking, I forgot what video it was, but somebody made a comment where I said something and my trauma therapist told me this, I know this through yoga as well. Like when we're talking about shadow work and we're talking about things that like traumas that happened to us that have caused a residual type of behavior or reaction, it's not necessary to always remember what happened. That's not necessary. And somebody was like in my comment section, oh yes, but we need to know like why, how, no, 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 no. It's kind of like what you were saying and me with like not labeling things good or bad. When things happen to you in your life, for example, everybody knows that I was in an extremely abusive relationship in my early thirties to a man I was engaged to. I almost lost my life one night. That's how bad it was. Yes, he is someone that should be avoided for sure. Yes. However, I'm the one that stayed in the relationship. And so his participation has no place in my healing. He has nothing to do with my healing. Just blaming him for everything got me nowhere. But actually going into trauma therapy and figuring out why 
I had the propensity <laughs> to date men like this is what started my healing. So it doesn't matter what happened to an extent. What matters is how, what you're holding on to and why you're holding on to it. Because a lot of the times, the emotion we're holding on to that's pulling us down because of something that happened isn't really about what happened. It's something else within us that magnetized to that. It's some, an energy that stays in our bodies. Because we're holding on to it yeah. for some reason. And usually what we're, why we're holding on to it has nothing to do with the person who did it to us. It has everything to do with us. Everything to do with us. And, and we got to <laughs> dig into that. And I, in, in a yoga, like in, in, with my students, like I was laughing with Shanti, like my teacher. And I love Indian teachers because there's no bullshit. They just, it's, there's no poetry reading. There's no Enya music playing. It's just very cut and dry. And my teacher will literally be like, why fearing? Why fearing? Like if you're in the Mysore room and in traditional yoga, guys, there's not a teacher leading a class with music playing. It's you have in traditional yoga, the traditional yoga, you already have six series that are already been choreographed and practiced for thousands of years that you're working off of. And so the Mysore room, everybody's wherever they are in the series. So people are doing their practice at different times and the teachers walking around working with people individually as it should be. That's Parampara. That's the real yoga, which we are going to do an episode on that, guys, because there's a lot of fake. 99% of the yoga you see in America is fake. It's not real yoga. All right. So with that being said, the reason why my teacher is able to do this is because it's traditional. So he'll sit there on your yoga mat with you and be like, why fearing? When you're having this issue, you see people like when there's not music playing and the classes are being led and people are having to bring themselves to the series. You see people stop on their mat and start picking with their fingernails and like pausing before going to the next posture. And it's because there's something triggered in them that the posture is going to bring up. And so they take a pause so, and my teacher will walk up and be like, why fearing? Why are you afraid right now? It's just a back bend. And so you have to go and think why, or he'll say, where's your mind? Where's your mind right now? Is it out there on the street because you don't want to face what's about to come on your mat? And the beautiful thing too, about this, this idea of going into the dark shadows of our mind in the dark places and Patanjali makes this very clear in the yoga sutras too. And this is true for a shadow work of, of all lineages, you know, nowhere in the yoga sutras does he say yoga is supposed to be easy and relaxing. That's not in any of the yoga scripture. That's something Americans. And I believe the cabal created to try to distract us from the real healing of yoga. Patanjali talks a lot about the mind being in the now and tomorrow never comes and the past is done. But we're always living either in tomorrow or the past. Tomorrow, <laughs> what's coming in the future? What happened yesterday? Our mind is never right here in the now moment. And even in A Course in Miracles, it's, God lives in the now. God's in the now. And so, for example, in a traditional yoga practice, when you're having to like stand up with your leg behind your head or do a back bend and catch your ankles and hold it, that triggers a lot of intense emotions. But what happens in those postures in that moment is that your mind's not thinking about when you're in it, your mind's not thinking about the laundry. Your mind's not thinking about something your dad said to you five years ago or the next boy you're going to date. Your mind's there in that moment, just living with what's coming up. And that's where the healing happens because you're in that now. And so for people who don't have a physical practice to teach them that in your life, when you're going through something hard, even though it's hard, it's the biggest blessing you'll ever receive because where is your mind? It's there, presently with you. And that's where God is. And that's where the surrender happens. You know, there, my, my grandfather, I think talking about the illusion that this world is a, the hologram, the illusion, my grandfather used to say this all the time. You know, my granddad would sit there and say, kids, they can take everything away from you. They can take your money from you. They can take your house from you. They can take your wife, your husband from you. But what they can't take from you is you. And that's what we're learning. You are all you have. And that's a powerful place to be. Yeah. So this is a crazy, I mean, like I said, guys, uh, <laughs> But I heard this morning, don't, it, if we learn how to, we can't control the waves. So we just got to learn how to surf. And anytime those, those feelings come, think about the beautiful, another one of my favorite quotes is some of your best days have never even, ha haven't even happened yet. 
And so for, in order for us to be in a place to receive those best days, we need to be as, as, as clear of our own shit as possible, right? And so now's the opportunity. This is like literally like screen cleaning, isn't it? The universe oh, is yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful opportunity to like. Go ahead, sorry. Because I just really write ourselves. I'm excited. I, I, I'm like going into this, like, first of all, surfing is exhilarating. If you haven't tried it, I said that at the beginning of the show, but I'm learning to surf on the waves of all these energies. And even though it, it's, it's crazy energy to me, See, I thrive on change anyways. I love change. Um, obviously, good change. But I, I'm looking at it, and I'm feeling all these different energies, and I'm like, wow, this is out of the mundane, standing feelings that I get from just regular, regular old living, you know, day to day. Um, so it, it's all about to uh, putting it into a new perspective as well, a perspective that... Um, is exciting and uh you know but also living in the now like you said bryce because that's so important of living in the now just go with the journey enjoy the waves you know what i mean whether they're big small um and um there's exciting times ahead of us and you know we shouldn't just assume that if we lost our crypto if we lost this if we lost that the world is ending you know what i mean um that's part of the agreement that we each individually made to coming into this world is losing those things. And sometimes what is, what does, you know, Mr. T say is he said one time, I, I want to lose everything temporarily to see, you know, who would stay because I think he understands all of this stuff. You know what I mean? Cause he's a very smart person, but I don't know where I'm going with this, but, um, Sometimes we have to lose it all in order to understand ourselves as, you know, that's where I'm going with that. Well, how many people, and and I think this is why this triggered me so much too, is I, I, there's a lot of, we all have childhood trauma. Not, 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 not one of us did not, does not have some trauma from our childhood. Like that's just, it's not a competition. Like we all have trauma, but we've done, Stephanie, we've done like two episodes where we've read into the school I went to. Um, I went to a very uh, hoity toity a private school my whole life. My, my school had a lake with swans on it. We had a chapel. You know, I, I'd never seen the only public school with lockers I'd ever seen was on Saved by the Bell until I went to one like event at a local public school. And I was like, whoa, it looks just like Saved by the Bell. Cause my school didn't have, my school was like hardwood floors. And yours was a Rory Gilmore school. I don't, I didn't watch the game. Like- Oh, you didn't watch the Gilmore Girls? No. Chilton. Chilton um, actually takes place in Connecticut. But yeah, Chilton was one of those hoity-toity rich schools. Very rich. They didn't have lockers either. Hmm? Very, very rich school. Very, very. And there was, we were, most of the kids there were were lineage. Before when when my parents, it was an all boys school. My dad went there. It's also a boarding school. Um, And there's a lot of things I'm grateful for. Like I grew up in a very small group of kids. There was very much a bubble. I'm still friends with a lot of them. We all knew each other. We all knew each other's siblings. When I had my back surgery, one of my friend's dads was my anesthesiologist. Another friend's dad did the surgery, you know? And so we all kind of knew each other. So there were some benefits. However, there was a lot of trauma. There was a lot of uh, mental abuse going on, spiritual abuse going on at that school, I always say my high school trauma does not come from the kids I went to school with. There weren't really clicks. There weren't, we were too, it was too small (laughs) from the school itself. And I know we've read into it, Stephanie, that my school was definitely part of this group and had to capitulate. And, um, and I think for me, a lot of my stress and my disdain for money is comes from that. And I'm not saying because there are a lot of people out there that are super wealthy, that are incredible people. Look at Mr. T. But I think that that whole there was a lot of pressure put on us. Um, For example, academically, uh, when I was I graduated in 2001, um, my school, we didn't have home ec. That wasn't an option. There was no shop class. we, We had to take calculus. And we had to do, and, and after you graduated, you, uh, you could opt when you went to college to jump into sophomore year and skip your freshman year because that's how academically challenging it was a prep school. 
And so, um, I just have all that pressure and, and I got really sick in high school. Even my freshman year, I, we were, were overworked so much where I would have this propensity, just get so tired. I'd throw up, I'm exhausted as a 14. So I think I, I have a lot of trauma. And when I, the whole crypto thing came up all of a sudden, the, I have, a, I have a lot of friends that removed themselves from the earth plane at a very young age because of the, the pressure. You know, there's one person I know that talks a lot about securing generational wealth for your family. And every time I see that, I'm like, like, I just want to like throw up because even in that facade, that's all an illusion. That's all a facade. People who come from that world are under so much, especially the, I mean, most of the boys I went to were like such and such the third, such and such the fourth. They had so much pressure to be a doctor, be a lawyer, to, to continue this lineage, right? And we know, I know that my school was part of this group and we know a lot of these one percenters are a part of, I mean, they're, we would never trade, I would never trade my life with any of them, you know, because of the shit they've been through. And so I think for me, when I started seeing yesterday that people were actually taking their lives because of money, you are worth so much more than that. Don't let that evil system do that to you. Don't let that take your joy. Because I'm here to tell you, I don't give a shit how much money you have in your bank account. I really don't care at all. I'll buy you lunch if you're hungry. Like, I don't care. You are what's important. And I've laughed about that. Every guy I've ever dated has been poor because I don't care. I never, I never care. I just like, I like the person, you know? And so please guys, please know that this is going to pass. If it is bringing up some darkness in you, some, some issues in you, use it as an opportunity, that resistance to, to course correct, to understand that you are not your bank account. You are a, a uniquely individual, beautiful person. God doesn't care. Your money's not going to follow you into the next life. We know that, right? Like it's not, it's not coming with us, right? Like we know that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that, that Mercedes isn't coming with us, right? That, that family house, beautiful marble floors, that's not coming with us, right? That's, that's just earth that's here on this plane. And you are so much more than that. So anyway, I just, I just want to make sure that people, I don't know. It just, I, I know a lot of people who, because of the pressure of that. And I just, you know, please don't do that guys. DM me if you need to talk. If you've got a lot of stuff coming up or if you had a major financial tragedy, um, like what Stephanie was saying with the journaling, I really encourage you to balance this, the tough stuff that's coming up with a list of your assets. Look at the qualities about you that are lovely, that are good, that are helpful, that are intelligent, and just make a list of everything and don't be shy and then read it over because that, you know, that is who you are. We're, we're taught so much of our life to focus on the bad stuff, the stuff that needs to be changed, the negative stuff, the stuff that people don't like, the stuff that I don't like. How often are we encouraged to list our assets and focus on that stuff? Because we have so many, yeah, we have so many, and you know it can be hard with shadow work. And there's a lot of people doing a lot of shadow work, and it's it's really important. It's essential to do your shadow work. Mm -hmm. But I really encourage you to balance it and look at your assets as well. Absolutely, so that you don't get sucked down in, into a hole of sadness and grief and you know don't spell cast yourself negatively amen <laughs> i've been doing i've been i mean i've on a totally different topic i, I know shanti and i did an episode on um body morphic disorder which is something i've struggled with in my life and i think i said on that episode like i at i'm pushing 40 years old in february of 2023 i'll be 40 and I've started every morning. I look at myself naked in a mirror and I compliment myself. And I say stuff like, you're almost 40 and you got a six pack. Look at that. 
I've worked hard for that six pack, but you know, um, your boobs are still pretty perky. Like, you know, like I, <laughs> and, and, and I, and I, I'm, I feel like my body is starting to show signs of that positive vibrational versus what I was conditioned. And I think that is, it, that is a conditioning, right? We're taught that, you know, it's with money, with looks, with everything that's part of the, the 3d world from a very young age, we're taught to be hard on ourselves, to no one's ever going to punish you as hard as you're going to punish yourself for stupid things. You know, the first rule of, of um, the yogic principles is, um, and one of the yamas is a, a word that's ahemza. And ahemza means nonviolence. So hemza is violence. Ahemza is nonviolence. And Patanjali picked, that's the first, that's the foundation of this practice. And he picked this word nonviolence very specifically he didn't pick peace he didn't pick, pick kindness he picked non-violence because there is a way to go about your life ag aggressively healing yourself and letting yourself experiencing the shadow work without being violent towards yourself right um without you know we uh, we say i tell my students a lot it's we don't want to open up pandora's box once you get you can't put the shit back in the horse like we want to slowly un pull back these layers so the nervous system can handle it. And another thing with Ahemza that it took me a long time to understand is most of us would never speak to our friends or other people the way we speak to ourselves. There are things that I would say to myself that I would never say to Emmy or Stephanie. And if anybody ever said what I say to myself to these two ladies, I would be pissed, but I say it to myself all the time. Mm. Yeah. So, and that's one thing I, I think I said this in the beginning with the whole crypto thing, like forgive yourself, have that mercy on yourself. If you fell for it, forgive yourself because we've all fallen for stuff. We've all done stupid things where we've fallen for shit. The matrix dangled in front of us. Right. And I, you're right, Stephanie, if people bought a lot into crypto, they probably was in their soul contract to learn something from this experience. So, okay, cool. Now you're in algebra class. Now you're going to take your, now, now you're at that class, right? That's, this is just your class you're in now and um, learn from the experience and forgive yourself. Like, again, none of us know truly what's going, we're just using our, our best logic and what we can to, to figure out what's going on. So, so don't beat yourself up for making that mistake. Don't do it. You know, does that make sense? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> sounds like it's like a Debbie Downer episode to an extent, but that's okay, guys. We want everybody to know that we're all in this together. And if you're feeling, and I think there's maybe some like validation if you are feeling um, certain type of way, maybe stressed out or emotional. Now you know why, and so use it to your advantage to to grow and to nurture yourself. Yeah. And exercise is great, guys. Get out there, get some fresh air, get your heart pumping, get your blood flowing. It always helps. So, all right, ladies, any parting words you want for our want to sell to, uh, tell to our audience? Um, yeah, just slow down. Take the next few weeks and just take a breather. You know, even if it's just a mental breather, just like get out in nature. We went to the beach all day yesterday and it was amazing. Like I feel almost a sense of slight euphoria today, just being out in the sun and in the water and on the sand. You know, if you can go sit by a tree or go for a walk in the park or go look at some wildlife or whatever. Um, and just slow down. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, now you make me want to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite place to be. Um, I think I've said everything I've need to say, so I'm good. I'm going to put a challenge to everybody watching right now. On my channel, I'm assuming this will be okay, okay to do on Stephanie and Emmy's channel too. For everybody watching right now, I want you to put in a comment section three things that you love about yourself. I like that. Amen. Yes, absolutely. And it can't be anything material. What do you like about yourself? Three things about yourself 
that you really like about yourself? Let's, let's start focusing on that. Yes. Your true value. So awesome. Love it. Well, before Stephanie, before we leave, do you want to pull just like a few cards to see what the week, what God wants to tell us about the week ahead? So Saturday. And today is the day of Saturn, guys. It is the day of karma. So Saturn is also your karma, which is just your work. That's all it is. Nothing scary. It's just, we all have it. It's just your work. So um, in the uh, traditional yoga practice, we always rest on Saturdays. That is like the Sabbath. So in order to observe that, that I think my teacher thinks we should just lay in bed all day, but <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that in the West. We don't have cooks and drivers and all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> we got dogs that have to go outside and go to the bathroom. We got kids that need, <laughs> need to know, so. yes. yes, five minutes sitting under a tree and just breathing is amazing. We're going to have a wild week. Sounds exciting. Um, interest. This isn't what this card means, but this is what I'm getting from it. It's almost like he just removed the wand out of the ground, like a plant, like you were saying, Emmy. Nice. Like uprooting. Things are being uprooted. And there are, this is a major arcana, so the world, so there's going to be worldwide large changes that are occurring for the collective endings. Yeah, well, the world Their can endings. be of a karmic cycle too, right? Yeah, so this could be on a worldwide or individual level. So these energies are going to be uplifting, ener you know, stand-in energies, Um and, and causing changes in people's lives that are, it's a major arcana, so it's a very, uh, not a temporary change, it's a life-changing change, and endings are going to be occurring, um, along with, uh, like, the, uh, the Most High, the Creator is offering these new beginnings to us, to, this was inverted, so to unstuck, get us unstuck out of that stand in energy this these energies are pushing us forward it's almost like god is saying uh -uh, you're not staying where you are i'm pushing you out the door like the mom bird pushing the baby bird out of the nest so it'll fly yes exactly that's sometimes like you said emmy um that energy that holds us accountable right you know creators holding us accountable it's like nope you need, you can't sit here. You can't sit where you are. You need to become unstuck. These energies are forcing us out of that unstuckness, but it's giving us a chance to look at, this is a reminiscent card, the six of cups. So it's like, we're, we're observing um, these energies that have been stuck. And once they become unstuck, then we observe them. And we um, look at them and then we release them, right? So that we can start loving ourselves again. So that's, that's what this week is all about, is um, it, it's creator pushing us in the, in the direction we need to go. Whether you want it or not, you're not going to have really much of a choice. It's, these energies are forcing us into these new beginnings. That's well, awesome energy. I like it. Yeah. And that's one thing too, before we sign off, I'm going to bring to the attention. of <laughs> So has you guys ever heard of rolfing? Rolfing? Rolfing. It's Not a form rolfing. of rolfing. Rolfing. Like the form of massage that you get into the fascia. It's intense massage. It works with the fascia. Okay. Emotional release. I get it done in India and ooh, is I've that the heard. oil, the oil, the, the castor no, no. oil you no, no, no. that's 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 mild compared to rolfing rolfing can be very okay. intense well ida roth <laughs> came up with this concept of healing um of releasing the because we, we hold our information in our fascia right it's it's all there um she studied the human body and human patterns and behaviors for a long time decades and there is only so much that we as human beings can do to self-correct because we all have blind spots right so we always need teachers. But at some point, what she discovered is there has to be an external force that comes in to, to change a pattern within you. 
And that's why we have aggressive adjustments in the, in the traditional yoga. They're not the sweet little adjustments. They're aggressive. They're cranky. That's why roughing is so aggressive with the fascia is because it's that external force to cause movement. And when you said that, that's what came into my head. I was like, yeah, this is like what roughing is telling us that sometimes we're only going to get so far when we're doing things ourselves, because we're always going to carry blind spots. Yeah. Sometimes things have to come in and it's, it's an energy. What I'm getting is it's a very forceful yet loving energy. And, and what I'm seeing in my brain right now is, and this would happen for me. Let's say we were going um, skydiving for the first time, never done it before. And the thought of it is that would petrify me first of all. Okay. Yeah. Skydiving. Okay. So you're sitting on the edge of the plane with the door open you're strapped to another person or you're strapped. You're actually, you just, you're, you're going by yourself. I know they don't originally do that in the actual skydiving. You're, you're with somebody, but you're sitting on the edge of that plane. You don't know what to expect. It's it, you're looking down like, Oh hell no. And guess what? The person behind you whoosh. And all of a sudden you're flying. You're like, shit, this is fun. Right. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be saying that, but I'm just trying to come up kind of like your plant analogy. You see the urine just coming out of you as you come down. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're, you get your bearings in the air and then you pull your cord. So the parachute opens up and you're like, oh, I survived it. Now, my heart is beating fast, but I survived it. And okay, that was quite the experience. It's like one of those, it, it, that, the energy I am getting is it's, no, no, you're not staying on that plane. Push and you're off. Whee! It's kind of like a tough love. It's like a tough love. Yes. Like, yeah, yes. yeah. And that's what, yeah. Oh, it's funny. I know um, I told Shanti and Mornay because Shanti posted a video on Facebook of her skydiving in Nancy. <laughs> I never say Mornay's country, but um. Uh, skydiving is something that is absolutely terrifying to me, but I keep telling myself I'm going to do it because I think I need to, to do something like that to like, and when I go visit them, I'm going to strap up and jump out of an airplane with them. So <laughs> whenever we're about to travel again without having, you know, so, um, so, all right, guys, we'll buckle up because I guess we're all going to go skydiving together, whether we like it or not. <laughs> And if you got to pee while you're doing it, just <laughs> face your body in the other direction so you don't pee on any of us. Um, oh my gosh. So it, it's fine. You know, we're, as one of my teachers used to say, no one gets out of this world alive. We all have to go through this and we're all going through it together. And, you know, if you need someone to talk to, you can DM me on Twitter. Um, just hold your head up high. No, please know that some of the best days of your life have not happened yet. And if you remove yourself because of this stressful weekend, you're never going to experience those beautiful days that are ahead of you. So um, the best is truly yet to come. All right, ladies. Yes. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.